Well, I think it's certainly been the year of the fish. Uh, petrified fish, that is. It has been one of those brands that has um, repeatedly come out with new models this year, new designs, all consistently really perfected at the budget level. And I would uh, put them right up there with uh, other companies like Dam Designs, uh, which has come out with a lot of uh, new models this year. And of course, uh, Best Tech, Civivi, all the usual uh, budget level, although Civivi's uh, bumped up a little bit. This uh, PF P02, a design by David Chen, comes in at $35. And uh, you can get them at White Mountain Knives. And you'll get 10% off if you use my discount code, Old Sword. Let's take a closer look at this beauty. And we're going to measure it up and do some comparisons with a few others. I think the level of um, quality and manufacture for $35, and this is the G version of the PO2. The PO1 was the Beluga. We'll take a look at that in a moment as well. That was a design by Nashorn. And he puts up a lot of uh, knives. I believe he may sell a lot of the petrified fish knives. So minimal branding on this. In fact, other than the pivot pin, which looks like it's a little askew. <laughs> That could be corrected. It is a design by David Chen, as I said. There's his signature. They kept the branding to a minimum. There's the PO2. And there is a D2 knife at this price point. That is what you're going to get, and that isn't bad. I keep mentioning when I talk about D2 that I have a Microtech uh, crosshair fixed blade knife, an excellent knife, very much fitting their quality. That's in D2 from back maybe eight, ten years ago. Um, since then, they've changed and uh, they've uh, started making it out of other steels. I don't know if they even that make that model. But my point is that even high-end manufacturers have used and still do use on occasion D2. So there you go. It is a uh, tool steel that is not completely stainless. It's sort of on the borderline. If you don't take care of it and you abuse it or you use it in harsh environments, um, it may rust on you. But I remember back when all guns were blued and they weren't stainless and um, didn't see too many people's guns rusting if they took care of them. So, there you go. And uh, get off my soapbox. <laughs> Look at the uh, nice grooving that they put in the lower half of the handle. Um, nice and simple. Not always a big fan of these uh, ventilated holes, skeletonized holes in the clip, but, you know, what are you going to do? And speaking of that, you can see that there is weight relieving, significant inside the knife and the liners on both sides and so uh, why don't we measure this up and then we can do a compare to a few other petrified fish knives so we have an overall length of this knife not small if I bring it right out to the point there we're gonna call it uh, eight and three quarters got a blade uh, we're gonna call it three and three quarters and a cutting edge uh, slightly less than three and three quarters. And let's take a look at the blade. It seems to be a pretty thick stock. 3.7 millimeters. And the handle, not particularly thin, comes in at 0.62 inches. And for weight, my feeling is it won't be extremely light, but it won't be extremely heavy. But let's see. It's a large knife. 
Well, a little heavier than I thought. 5.11 ounces. Okay. Many of the petrified fish knives, not all of them, but many of them are heavier and solid. But you're getting um, pretty good blade stock on most all of them. With a few exceptions, I believe, you're getting exposed liners. Lanyard hole, as you can see here, clip will not be switchable. They do use dome head screws, but that clip is inset into the handle. So the clip is flush with the handle. Screws are not. Um, had it in and out of the pocket a few times. Really didn't seem to hang up too much, if at all. But uh, you're not always going to get a premium treatment on a $35 knife. Their next level is a $55 knife. And uh, let's bring one or two of those out. Here's the box, by the way. Not the box for this particular one. I've got them labeled. This is the 949 Warrior. So I'm bringing out two of my favorite petrified fish knives so far. This particular warrior has that um, kind of matrix-looking swirled, um, they call it uh, carbon fiber G10. I'm not sure what that really means. But uh, I love the blade shape on this. And for $55, they went with crowning the spine. Uh, they give you extra hardware, and they give you... Uh, this little dog tag type thing with the petrified fish on it. Kind of neat. Lots of extra goodies for the extra 20 bucks. So, just really like this one. This was one of the first I had picked up, and I'm glad it was. And then, of course, uh, the ever popular Beluga, designed by Nashorn. And it is a front flipper. Everybody loves that blade shape with that fuller. This was my first one. I'd since picked up one other in uh, black and blade and brown micarta handle, I think. This is green G10. You can see how they got the pivot okay on that one. And on that one. But for whatever reason, this might have been hastily assembled. It's a little off. I'm going to see if I can correct that just for aesthetics. What the heck? <laughs> but you can see these are all about the same size knife. Very tall blade on the Beluga. Uh, slightly narrower blades on the Warrior and on the uh, PO2. So the Beluga, I believe, is also known as the PO1. Very smooth knives. Extremely drop shutty in most cases, and if they aren't, a little bit of oil and some adjustment will get you that. But this isn't about those two knives, this is about the uh, PO2. Um, great utility knife, I would call it a super nice EDC blade, high grind. And they did a nice job whew, sharpening that. I can feel it bite. When it's smooth and it bites, um, like Spyderco's, that's, that's the uh, factory grind, uh, factory sharpening grind that I prefer. Another quick look around. And again, uh, I picked this up on White Mountain. I think there's still a few in stock. Some petrified fish there are out of stock. Some are in stock. I have a feeling that uh, we're going to see more of them in the coming year of 2022. Uh, these are also widely available on Amazon. And of course, if you choose to deal with uh, overseas sellers, you can get them at AliExpress, uh, maybe DHgate. I'm not sure. I haven't dealt with them. But uh, again, uh, stateside, Amazon, and uh, 
if you do go with Amazon and you don't want to wait a month or two for to have it shipped from China, make sure you choose Prime. And uh, the Prime knives are usually the ones that are in stock and will ship in a day or two. That has been my experience. So there you go. Probably the last uh, petrified fish of the year. We'll see what models they come out with next year. Uh, who knows? I may have a full inventory myself of petrified fish knives before <laughs> I'm done. This old sword signing out. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We will catch you soon.